divorce. I'm falling for the divorce. <laughs> I'm Polly. I'm triggered in every one of my relationships. A lot of people think if you're Polly, oh, you're trying to run away from your husband and go get into the good stuff over here. No. There's nowhere to run away from yourself. <laughs> and that's why I will never break up with one of my husbands or my partners. I don't break up with anyone. Because I appreciate your triggering me. Because I know how to find the growth opportunity. I know that your triggering me is a gift. How can a woman have two husbands? Well, you calling them husbands and wives. How can a woman have two husbands but not having sex with two husbands? <laughs> It really is. In fact, I got one more brother. We, go, we got another brother back here. We go bring up. Let me know where you stand. We polyamorous or we monogamous? Well, the short, well, you know what? First of all, I, I think the, the question itself is a flawed question, but I will answer it. Okay. Okay. Because, <laughs> please, please. Because it, you know, where you are is depends on where you are. Now, personally, right now, where I am in my life, I'm polyamorous. Okay. However, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for anyone else. Okay. Um, I see a lot of value in uh, monogamous relationships um i they they have their place and their role um however it depends on where you are and what you're trying to accomplish so so these are the lies you see because these are the people who just phone in saying what they think about uh what they think about monogamous relationship and poryama they want to have everything Okay, like we don't get to decide to be doing this. If you want to live that lifestyle, just know that you're living in contradiction to what God has designed. Simple and straightforward. It doesn't matter whether you're having a good time or not. That's not what defines what marriage is. Amateurs around raising children in this structure. Absolutely. So one of the things that you discussed was, are you just jumping in there and letting your feelings run wild and just following your desires? No way. When I thought about this, which we thought about this decision for many years before we jumped into this, and we didn't jump in at that. We wrote about it, we studied it, we learned, we taught. So two things about that. Every man who I am with is my father's child. And that takes us back to our roots. We are Africans. <laughs> this is how this indigenous person thinks. So that no child is left behind. We can't depend on the government to do that. We're doing that. No child left behind. Another thing is women say, well, I want one man, one man. What happened if your one man pass on? My children have fathers for days. And each father brings different skills, tools, you know, financial situations, business situations, learning, all types of things. And all these mothers, the women that I'm with, you know, that's a village, that's people cooking, cleaning. I'm, I, they don't all live with me, but of course they're all the children's parents. If I have a child, that's his child. They don't do this paternity thing, it's mine. You saw the video online, I brought McDonald's to one child and there's three kids living there. Uh-uh, we don't play that over here. That's what I'm saying, we're returning to sanity. In our community yeah like i said earlier you know all men all women and children and all women love all men and children like that's our philosophy right so we believe that men need to step up as men men need to form brotherhoods women need to form sisterhoods and we need to kind of get out of our pettiness and our differences and work and, and learn tools to work through those things but yes i need to be responsible for all the children who i'm for the women i'm partnered with and kenya does the same thing for the men where, where she's partnered with now, um, Stephen's family, do you think that this same result that you guys are are looking to accomplish with, you know, building family and, and these strong ties, do you think those things can still be accomplished with, let's just say, strong family values and connections or, or, or strong friendships or strong community? Can you get those same uh, levels of things accomplished without actually involving yourself in a polyamorous uh, relationship? Absolutely. But it has to be community. Like, for instance, the good pastors over there, they're in Houston. We're in Houston. We should be connected. There should not be religion separating us or sexuality, sexual preferences, LGBT, all these little divisions that people try to put because this is tearing our communities apart. It's nothing wrong with passing them lifestyle. It's nothing wrong with our lifestyle. If we're using a book to keep us apart, then this is a problem. Everybody, even if you're in an exclusive situation, we need to be coming together like this. And we created the tools to do that. Communication systems that support us in getting over ego so we can learn to, to, to be together again as community. Yeah. And, and Pastor James and, and Pastor Tiffany, what, what are your guys' general thoughts about this? Do, do you think that, you know, this uh, polyamorous community and relationship 
could actually be a benefit or could actually be effective in uh, accomplishing, you know, some of those goals that that both um, Carl and, and Kenya spoke about. Whatever they're doing, yes, is wrong. Whatever they're doing, we don't need to come together. Uh, what you guys are living in this sinful lifestyle to be promoting that sinful lifestyle. Okay, so our message is to calling out you guys, like you know, repent and believe the gospel. Stop living that uh, that lifestyle because God does not condone it. If anything, God condemns it. So, yes, we do follow the book because we follow the one who wrote the book, right? That's his word. That is our standard. So, according to that book, okay, according to the book, we cannot be following what you guys are doing. So, we either going to follow you or we're going to follow the book. Simple and straightforward, right? We are, we are, we know, we follow this. <laughs> the word of God. So, the word of God tells us that that lifestyle is condemned in scripture. So we're just not going to smile just for the sake of, quote unquote, coming in together. Okay? We can do, you guys, you can do community by just being husband and wife. You already have kids. Why do you have to have multiple husbands in order for you to have community? So they are creating these categories that don't exist anywhere else. Okay? Because they want to satisfy the desires of the heart. Okay? That's what they're doing. Like, no, it shouldn't be. Those can two work together unless they agree. So, no. We cannot, okay? We are in this world, but not of this world. So what they are doing is the things of this world, which we are forbidden to be partakers of such things. So, no, we reject that idea. And then she said that she has found a way, right? She's written the book like, okay, you've written a book, but like this book was existed long before you were born. And it's things that have been tried and tested and proven to be true, right? Over centuries upon centuries upon centuries. And then she says, like, okay, what they're doing is whatever is Africa. No, 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 I'm from Africa. Okay. Everywhere you go around the world, if you have more than one wife, all those houses, they have issues. Okay. They have issues. And it's not like over there, people are okay, like, oh, okay, fine. My husband has multiple, uh, multiple husband. No. But most of the times it's actually polygamy. It will be the husband who is going to have multiple wives, not the wife. You're not going to find that at all. <laughs> You're not going to find that where you have a wife who has multiple husbands in Africa. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> You're going to find a man who has multiple wives for sure. Okay? You're going to find polygamy for sure. But that doesn't mean that it's okay. Even within that polygamous uh, uh, marriage and relationship, they also have their issues, right? Because they're also going against the scriptures. So, no. She might make it sound so good like, no, we're doing whatever in Africa. Like, no, no, no. Where? Where in Africa exactly? Lady Kenya. Okay? So, uh-uh. No. We reject that. Wholesale. <laughs> We just can't come together because you want us to come together. Okay? We just can't do it. Them speak. This can happen without me needing a multiple husband or Pastor James needing another wife. We have a huge church family. Um, you have, I mean, you sororities, fraternities. You have multiple ways. You have extended family. I guess it's, it's just a little odd to me. And I guess I'm sitting here trying to figure this out because the truth of the matter is, Polyamorous means many loves, and it means that I get to have multiple husbands, and my husband can have multiple wives. But as we're talking, that's not really what we're addressing, and we're making it more so just be like, you know, do you know both all lifestyles? You know, you you all's monogamous relationship is fine. And my question is, well, not even a question. It just seems as though what they're talking about that can still be accomplished without having um, multiple husbands, unless I'm unless I'm missing something. I just want to narrow down what the topic is. Um, because everything, building community and making sure that children don't grow up in broken homes, whether the mother or father are there, you can do that where you have mentorships. There are different clubs. There are different things that we can do where we can still um, have that where, where, where families are coming together. But why do I need a multiple husband or why do I need, why does he need multiple wives to make that happen? Yeah. And, and to your point, Pastor Tiffany, again, we said we support sexually exclusive relationships. And yes, you can make those things happen without you having other husbands or your, or your husband have other wives. We, we said that earlier. The difference is, is we're saying, well, yeah, like, let's do those things. Like, where's the demonstration of any of that happening? Like, what Kenya and I are doing is actually practicing what we preach, and we're building community actively. So we're not talking about theoretical things here. So yeah, I know that I could go reach out to Brotherhood, and, and you guys can build in the church and, and wherever else, but like, let's actually make that happen. Like, one issue I have inside of, again, the, the culture of monogamy is there is a lot of 
theoretical talk happening, but behind closed doors, like people are cheating on each other or they're not telling the truth, you know, about what's going on in their hearts and in their minds. We're just we're just saying here's a model that we are choosing to practice, but you don't have to do it the way we do it. And the thing is, is that the tools and techniques that we've developed, the church needs to adapt. These people need to adapt because there's too much going on in terms of the authenticity. Let's talk about that. Not the sex, but being able to tell each other the truth. That's a skill that takes time. I get couples who come to me who cannot do it for six months, 12 months, a year and a half. They can't. So I'm saying we've developed the tools and skills to support people in becoming authentic and getting over their ego and dealing with their trauma. This is what we do. And that's how we can be open and communal and polyamorous. That's why we would get there. But how prior can I, to that, we need the, the, the skills. Can I ask y'all a question? Yeah, go ahead. How can a man have two wives and not have be having sex with two wives? How can a woman have two husbands? Well, you calling them husbands and wives. How can a woman have two husbands but not having sex with two husbands? How can, how can they be a wife or your husband? for us you know marriage is not defined by sex okay like again that like, this is part like that's a monogamous thing in order to be monogamous the one requirement is your sexuality it's the one thing that monogamous people seem to focus on so in polyamory sex is not even a, a thing so yes you can you can connect with people any way you want to if i have multiple partners then it takes away the need for me to have sex with all those partners you see what i'm saying like i can actually have authentic friendships, friendships. And, and leave sex out of it unless that's a part of what we really want to do so yeah, most of my partnerships, to be honest, are, are platonic. They're, they're so not. why not just date? Date, you mean and not ever have gotten married? Yeah, like yeah, literally, why, why not just not be in a, in, in a marriage? Because we but want to be together to be forever. We have children, we have a, yeah. we have a legacy, we have investments. Why would we not want to be married? I hear people say, why get married? Yeah, it just we, doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't I mean, we get married? <laughs> again, marriage for us is not based on sexual exclusivity. No. So again, sex is not- But you see that these guys, their position, even when you ask the question, it crumbles. You see what I'm saying? It crumbles. He's saying that most of the relationships that he has, they are not, uh, they are not sexual, right? Most. Which means some of them are. Apart from his wife, we've already seen that this lady was out there, took a trip in Dubai, okay? So we can only imagine what exactly took place. Guys, what would interest a guy who is single, who doesn't have any relationship, to be taking trips with a married woman who has multiple husbands? For what? For just, just to go and have fun? Hmm? Who are they kidding? So these people want to have their cake and eat it too. Okay, so it is a very good question. Like, okay, so if either you guys are married or you're not married, right? But they want to have it all, uh, they want to have it both ways. And they'll be like, why shouldn't they be married? It's like, no, no, no. They want to redefine. And it says like, okay, we teach people to tell the truth and everything. Like, no, no, no. The Bible teaches us how to tell the truth. That's how we know that Lady Kenya is lying. And her husband is right there with him, okay? <laughs> oh, man, can you believe this, guys? <laughs> reprobate minds romans one exactly <laughs> we will follow the book yes we'll follow the book till the day we die we reject lady king out here okay <laughs> our relationship and our marriage so, and so, what you're doing what are you doing with your genitals it's about love and commitment so i can show up for my wife every single day Six. and my kids every single day same way i have multiple children i can love all of those children you know what i'm saying even though it's multiple and still provide, you know, be a father and be a mentor and, and all those things. So again, it's, you know, if I know I'm going to be committed to somebody for the rest of my life, then why not, you know, declare that in front of God in the community and, and actually hold my word, actually show the community what it looks like to be committed and to work through issues. Like we see ourselves as an example of what it means to work through issues. Again, we don't believe in divorce. No. Like we think it's just- I don't divorce it's, anybody, it's, it's, none of my partners. Again, it's the culture of monogamy, which where that's even an option. Well, you have to divorce. Guys, they're saying they don't believe in divorce, but both of them, they've been married before. So they are both in their second marriage. If they don't believe in divorce, why didn't they go back to their first wife or their first husband? Why did they divorce in their first marriages? So now they want to tell us that they don't believe in divorce. And then the guy went on to say like, oh, I want to do this in front of God. Which God? Hmm? Can you tell us? because you want to have sex with somebody else. So you have to dump somebody by the side of the road to go pick somebody else up. That's not going to ever build community. We don't believe in breaking families up, no. you know, unless you've actually gone through all the work and you've worked through the tools and you've got the support. Yeah, sometimes it's, it's required. Like we understand that we're not, we don't want to fault anybody for their choices, but 
again, we need to look at relationships from a different perspective and, and connection and love from a different perspective. And we're trying to communicate that through our lifestyle and our practice. I think we just have a very, very different belief system. Oh, and so I cannot separate. No, we don't have to look at uh, marriage and whatever from a different perspective. Okay? We can't. <laughs> there is only one perspective according to God's word because he's the one who came up with marriage. That's it. These people want to create their own things like, no, 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 no. Okay? The devil tried this game in the garden. Okay? So there's nothing new that these guys are bringing to us over here, guys. Can you imagine? <laughs> Oh, man, got to stay away from that lady. And then people, they, they, they're actually successful. They have, they've been doing this for 20 years. Can you imagine the marriages that are, are just being destroyed, thinking that this is the norm? Eesh, unbelievable. I in order for me to say that I'm in a relationship, I'm doing what I feel, this is just what it is for me. We have a different belief system. One of the ladies called in and she said it should not be about religion. Just, you know, state the, the differences on, on, on monogamy versus um, polyamorous. But the fact of the matter is you cannot separate the two because that's what I, that's the foundation of our marriage. If in the event that I remove what I believe, we have no real foundation. Yeah, you cannot. And then it's hard to have a relationship with God if you don't have a relationship with the word of God. Right. Because the word of God teaches me the principles of God. So just because practices may change throughout the custom, that don't mean that God's principles change. Right. And the principles are built in rules and codes that are designed to work and produce peace, fruit, power, freedom, love, joy, all of these things that money cannot buy. And so when you make statements also um, saying that if there are practices and there are certain things that the church need. Well, the truth of the matter is um, all churches are not the same. Right. And we are teaching people how to be self-controlled. We are teaching people how to be kind. We are teaching people how to be loyal. We are teaching people how to be dedicated. We are teaching people how to love in a monogamous way and to live our lives according to the instructions of the word of God. So when you say you don't know how, you, you kind of it's kind of like, why can't we all just get together and we just all do this? The battle of belief systems is going to clash at some point down the road because it's like your definition of a wife and a husband and marriage, it seems to be totally opposite of our definition between a wife and a husband in marriage. And when they start colliding, then that's when we're not going to be able to flow. Right. I just like once again, I think it's belief system. Now, of course, you, we all come together for the good of mankind. Uh, but with with the belief system, what we are really teaching people is that when you sign up with a relationship for Jesus Christ, you are signing up to die daily to yourself. Which means that when I die daily to myself, I am now at a place where I just do not live life based on what feels good to me, what I think is right. I am literally, he's, he's Lord and Savior over my life. So I just think it is a big, um, I want to word this properly. You can package something where it sounds really easy and it sounds really good. You can package it in a way that appeases a person's flesh. It sounds like it's easier. It sounds like, okay, it makes sense. We want to be truthful in this relationship. We don't want to bring any deceit. We want to have honesty. So when I bring in the honesty in the relationship, let me tell you my true desires about how I feel about this person. And so when you start massaging it in and then you start opening yourself up to multiple people coming into your relationship, the way the conversation is going tonight, because I've done a little research and I've watched several other um, interviews, tonight is just really keeping polyamorous in this real gray area. I don't feel like we really have, um, it's, it's just packaged up really nicely. And what I do know at, at the root of it, the reason for the conversation is, from when we started, can that, that was one of the, the first questions I think that, that, that Ty asked, can, you, can one person satisfy you forever? And it's not just about sex, but it is opening myself up to allow another man to come into my life where now I am selling, I am now sharing my soul with him. I'm sharing my heart with him. I'm sharing my spirit with him. I am now allowing someone to come in and I'm sharing parts of myself where I think another person called in and said it. If I'm giving my husband 70% and giving somebody else 25%, another person 5%, it's just, I would like for us to really stick at what the real topic is because the truth of the matter is in polyamorous relationships, you can have multiple um, partners in your life. No, it just doesn't start with sex, but that is one of the things that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm at this place where I don't want to open myself and get myself, my soul tied to so many other um, partners because I, it just goes completely against my belief system. Yeah, and when you make vows, when you make covenants, when you make promises and when you make agreements with other people, outside of the covenant that you have or the one main covenant that you have, you're opening yourself up for ungodly and unhealthy soul ties, spiritual warfare, right. which is evil flat out. And so therefore, um, once one more time, we got a battle of belief systems going on. Right.
they definitely do uh, have a battle of, uh, you know, this is definitely a battle of ideas for sure, right? And yes, everything they said over there, I definitely do agree. These guys, they want to make it uh, sound like, you know, it's fine. You can have these multiple relationships, okay? And just like, you know, it's not all the time that we're having, you know, it's not all the time that we're having sex. We are just, you know, it's just relationships. Like, no, why do you need those relationships? Why do you need those relationships? There's a need that there's something, those relationships are satisfying. So every time, that's why she has more than one husband. Because like, why can't she just have two, right? But no, she had two. That one didn't satisfy a certain area. She moved, she has another one. She has another one, right? So now she's just like, you know, she has all these multiple husbands who fill out the perfect husband. You see what I'm saying? So when you take 20% from this husband, 10 from this husband, 40 from this husband, and then you're going to create your quote-unquote ideal, your husband, because you just can't find that in one man. And... They think like, okay, that, that's okay. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, that's very troubling. Like, that's not, I don't know. That's just not a normal life. Even for a woman, like, no, it's, it, I don't, I'm sorry. It's, it's just wrong. That's just how I see it. Platform. Is, are, is there a threat to the relationship that you have, especially your primary relationship? When it comes to bringing these different energies, signing these different covenants, emotional ties, physical intimacy, when you bring in all of that in, do you now threaten your relationship, your primary relationship? Well, if you're asking, is, is polyamory difficult? It absolutely is. And when you're related with multiple people, it takes a high level of skill, it takes a high level of care and, you know, excellent communication skills. Um, in terms of like the soul ties or the energy thing, you know, being a possibility to break up the primary marriage or the first marriage or other relationships. We don't believe in that kind of thing. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely going to be a challenge. It's definitely going to be difficult, no doubt about that. And the thing that soul ties is based on scientifically is just a chemical called oxytocin. It's the bonding hormone. It's what makes you crazy when you first get in a relationship with someone. It's that um, bonding energy, that new relationship energy. And that's what everybody is afraid of, that you, know, you already went through that with your husband or your wife. Then it goes down naturally. Science says after seven years, they call it the seven year hump. That chemical has gone down. So you don't feel the same level of passion. 14 years, another hump. We did that. 21 years. And every seven years, that chemical decreases by half in terms of its secretion during sex. So that's all people are talking about is the bonding hormone, oxytocin. That's the soul tie because it is such a strong drug in the system. But uh, <laughs> that's going to be normal for you to have that experience if you're going to be polyamorous. And you just have to have the tools to learn how to do that. But we don't think it's like spooky or <laughs> demonic or something. This is just hormones. Okay. And, and Pastor, just just for context, because we did throw that word out here, yes, it, it might be a lot of people that might not have heard or be introduced yeah. to what a soul tie is or how it might affect the relationship. So, can you just give us a brief synopsis to bring some uh, to, to bring some understanding to that? Absolutely. A uh, man, according to Genesis, the second chapter, man is a spirit being. He has a soul. He lives in a body. He was made in the image and in the likeness of God. The image of God is love and creativity. The likeness of God is power. So the Bible says in Genesis two and seven that God formed man from the dust of the ground. He pulled ground, he pulled dust. He formed man. He breathed into him the breath of life. And man became a living soul. He's spirit, soul, and body. The spirit being, the spirit part of me is the spirit being that is connected to God. I connect to God through my spirit. I connect to myself through my soul. I connect to the world through my body. My soul is my mind, which is the mind that I use to think. It's my will, the part of me that I use to choose and make decisions and choices. It's my emotions, which feelings that are caused by pain and pleasure. It's the replay, the replay of my mind. You were just talking about that, Ty, about stuff just be playing in your mind over and over again like a horror movie, you can't get it out. The imagination, the preplay of the future, the personality. When you make a vow, when you make a covenant, when you make a promise, when you make an, um, when you make an oath, when you have sexual intercourse, what you do is you open yourself up to be your soul, mind, will, emotion, memory, imagination, personality, to be tied to someone or to something. And it's beyond hormones. It's beyond hormones, without a shadow of a doubt, because when you get married, uh, you go to the altar and you say vows, you say promises, you make covenants. Through words. Through words. Words are spirit, and there are spiritual containers that carry something. So therefore, I don't care how much skill you have. If you have a whole lot of skill in order to do something, but you don't have power to break some, then when you get tied to something that's illegal, ungodly, unhealthy, you will be tied to something 
for a long time and you will be malfunctioning and being dysfunction for a while until because you've opened yourself up in the spirit world to allow things to come upon you that demonstrate spiritual warfare against you. Once we're deaths again, so like we can go deep. James and Tiffany, okay? They're out there, they're preaching. I don't believe women should be uh, teachers. They said some things that are true. And like I said at the beginning, like, no, they say certain things that I don't agree with, okay? But to Kenya and her husband, right? They just outright, they don't even want to entertain this so-called, like, you know, this so ties, right? Because they want to be able to enjoy whatever their lifestyle. And these couples over here, like, you know, when they went into these so ties, I agree. Somebody put there, this is like the new age language, right? So we don't buy that, okay? So, but what we do have, we have the scriptures here, okay? So we have, um, we're going to let the word of God, okay, tell us. 1 Corinthians 1, uh, 6 says, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I take then the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh, right? But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Free from sexual immorality. Every other sin, okay? So this is the point right here. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? Whom you have from God, you are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. That's what the scripture teaches. You are to glorify your body, okay? Uh, you are to glorify God with your body. You are to represent your body as a living sacrifice, which is a spiritual worship. So, if you're, if you're married, right? God has designed you, you two people are coming one fresh, right? In the context of marriage. Anything that you're doing outside that, God condemns it. That's an abomination. That is sinful. You are sinning against your own body. You are sinning against your own blood. All these other things, you're stealing, you're whatever, it's outside there, right? But this sin right over here, God actually said, you have to free from it, okay? You have to free from it. But these people are not freeing from it. They're actually entertaining it. Not only are they entertaining it, they're actually creating it and they're promoting. They're creating, they're promoting, and here we are. So, yes. So the other pastor, you know, I wish he could have just, you know, stick to whatever, but I know culturally people are so intrigued about you know these so ties things of that nature so i do i'm very sympathetic to people who do believe about you know quote unquote whatever so ties because the fact of the matter is this right like anytime that you 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 bring yourself together with somebody else who's not your husband in that way they you know it's it's very dangerous right that's why like you know women are gonna get emotionally attached to that particular person, right? Like, it's just not, it's different for men and women, right? Like, women will be like, oh, you know, guys will be like, they went out, they just had a good time, they forget about it. A woman is just not going to go outside and just have a good time and forget about it. It doesn't work like that, right? Because men and women are wired differently, right? So, but this couple, this woman has multiple husbands, and so is the wife, like, no, it shouldn't be. So, so we're just going to stick to the scripture. According to the scriptures, you know, our, we shouldn't be doing these things. That when we choose our partners, you saw one of my long-term partners on there and how I supported him in getting another partner and getting married. We supported him and allow him to be in our space so that he could build up and start his own business. We do things based on building uh, a, a wealth, if you will, an abundance. Uh, uh, his wife works for our company. All of our partners work for our companies. We we are building community and sustainability and generational wealth. And so when, when we're looking at partnerships, we're not looking like, oh, do I want to have sex with them? That's ridiculous. Every day, if I walk outside, there's 100 men who want to sleep with me. I don't care anything about that. What can this person bring to my community? What is this person authentically needing themselves? How can we support one another? Are they willing to work within community? So this is not, this is another level. I don't know which polyamory everyone's talking about. Because we're talking mm. about building sustainable community for our people where 52% of our children are living in single family homes. Mm. Where we have a problem, a financial issue, an economic concern. That's what we're solving. We're also solving our relational concerns, ego concerns, to where we can't work together. That's what we're doing. We've been doing this for 20 years. So our success speaks for itself. 
So do you guys think if, they, if you tried to keep your relationship as a monogamous relationship and not bringing new partners into it, you yeah. guys would have divorced? No, no we divorced. don't believe in divorce. <laughs> like, we don't believe in divorce. So, so we understand that we're... So did you see everything that she explained there? It's, it's materialistic. So they are bringing all these men, these women, they, according to her, right? They, their wives, their husband, they all work for their company, right? They are building together. They are building communities. It's What about your soul? What profits a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Huh? Like, what is it? Like, yeah, this is... They're building um, Babylon, okay? That's what they're building. And they're calling that uh, community. A Babylon community. That's what they're building responsible for our lives so even in my marriage if there's something going on in my marriage as a man i understand it's on me i'm the responsible and accountable person if if kenya is experiencing something in her marriage to me that's not to her liking or is hurtful or painful she understands that there needs to be some responsibility and change within her in order to make the shift could be more communication could be her being more empathetic to me we don't know what it is but the bottom line is kenya and i understand in our version of spirituality is that we understand we have the power to create our lives and so could Kenya and I be exclusive for the rest of our lives? Absolutely. No problem. Like we didn't get into polyamory and open relating because, you know, we just couldn't control our lust or desires. We got to, to divorce. We would never divorce. We would never divorce. Like we, we, see, see, we can sit here on this, you know, live with you all and say, you know, with our chest out that we're going to be together for the rest of our lives, period, point blank. So we can stand in that. The reason why we can stand in that is because we've reached a level within our relationship where we could talk to each other about how we really feel, our authentic feelings. Kenya has supported me in ways that I didn't even imagine were possible by another human being, let alone a woman. So we've allowed ourselves to walk that path together and in walking that path, and it hasn't always been you know, easy, it's been very difficult at times, but in walking that path, we've grown into deeper love. By actually challenging each other and going through those challenges together, we've grown deeper and deeper and deeper into love. And that's how we've been able to get to this point. I don't recommend that people just look at the lifestyle and say, oh, I want to jump into that. It will it not takes, work. It takes skills, tools. That's why we've written 12 tools, books. The skills 12 books. We've been online. for. We have 80 courses. On, I mean, this is not a joke. We have a huge community of people doing this, taking back our love, taking back our life from where whoever took it. And again, like I told you all in the beginning, we support being sexually exclusive for as long as you want to do it or for your entire Forever. marriage or your life. Like we, we, we don't have any skin in the game when it comes to that. We want people to live the life they want to live. That's the difference. We're not judging anybody on what their choices are, but we do want to support you in having the tools that are required to be successful. Now let's let's talk family. No, they they're not helping anybody. They're not helping. They're just helping themselves and they're getting richer and richer over this issue. Yeah. But I'm like to me I'm like, dude, your your wife has a whole bunch of husbands. <laughs> No, man, I'm sorry. I'm not buying it. But yeah, they have to, you know, they have to make it palatable. Now learn to see the opportunity in the trigger. You have come here to call forth a challenge that will force you out of a conditioning that you learned. Whatever I didn't learn, my partner is going to trigger that. And if I cannot see that that's an opportunity for me to grow, where's the divorce? I'm falling for the divorce. <laughs> I'm Polly. I'm triggered in every one of my relationships. A lot of people think if you're Polly, oh, you're trying to run away from your husband and go get into the good stuff over here. No. There's nowhere to run away from yourself. <laughs> And that's why I will never break up with one of my husbands or my partners. I don't break up with anyone because I appreciate your triggering me because I know how to find the growth opportunity. I know that your triggering me is a gift to me. So with that science, it's easy to be in community, right? Reason number three why we divorce. This is going to be a hard one for you guys. Because I know you guys like to be pampered little pets, right? You have not learned to see the opportunity in the trigger. You have come here to call forth a challenge that will force you out of a conditioning that you learned. Whatever I didn't learn. Yes, guys, this is how, okay? 
So this is, I mean, you cannot make this stuff up, okay? So she has a whole bunch of courses, okay? And this is the husband over there. They have, uh, this is their whatever uh, com community. I mean, it's, uh, she went out, she, you know, she's on vacation with all, um, with all these other people. Look at her. So now she's showing off right now. She's out there, you know, outside the country. Mm -hmm. And, and I thought waiting until I'm dressed to make it ish. Steven's family, do you think that this same result that you guys are are looking to accomplish with, you know, building family and, and these strong ties, do you think those things can still be accomplished with, let's just say, strong family values and connections or, or, or strong friendships or strong community? Can you get those same uh, levels of things accomplished without actually involving yourself in a polyamorous uh, relationship? Absolutely, but it has to be community. Like, for instance, the good pastors over there, they're in Houston. We're in Houston. We should be connected. There should not be religion separating us or sexuality, sexual preferences, LGBT, all these little divisions that people try to put because this is tearing our communities apart. It's nothing wrong with passing them lifestyle. It's nothing wrong with our lifestyle. If we're using a book to keep us apart, then this is a problem. Everybody, even if you're in an exclusive situation, we need to be coming together like this. And we've created the tools to do that. Communication systems that support us in getting over ego so we can learn to... No, 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 no. Oh, so both of these couples are actually in Texas, okay? So, no, you don't want to be part of this community. You definitely don't want to be part of this community. Topic is, because the truth of the matter is, in polyamorous relationships, you can have multiple um, partners in your life. No, it just doesn't start with sex, but that is one of the things that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I just, am, I'm at this place, letting it go any further than the attraction. So if I'm bringing it to my husband, am I bringing it to him because I'm struggling? Or I'm bringing it to him because, hey, you know what? I, I, I'm attracted to somebody and I'm thinking about stepping out, stepping out. It's just, what is the motive for me bringing it to him? If it's just open conversation or we're at church and it's like, oh, you know, there was a guy over there. He was real clean, had something nice. I mean, the conversation, but if I'm bringing it to him, I'm probably bringing it to him because I'm about to enter into a struggle. Now, if that's the case, then absolutely, I need to discuss it with my husband. If it's something that's about to make me think that I'm going to step outside of my covenant, I definitely think it's something that we need to talk about and we need to address it. That's exactly what we did. Yep. And, that, and this is what we should show people how to do. This is what we're right. saying. They've gotten this idea and seen the power of being able to be authentic. Like the pastor just said, if you're authentic, it's going to stop that next move. Right. This is our whole philosophy. This is called open relating, being open and honest with your partner. And that takes a training. We can train you guys on how to have those conversations because the wife going to be mad. The husband going to be mad. How do we deal with those egos? That's what we've written. Up-level communication systems for this. So, yeah, that's, that's perfect. We're moving in the same direction now. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. The only difference is, Kenya, I'm attracted, but I'm not about to try to get another husband. <laughs> 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 you have to know how to have those conversations right. and, and have them be smooth and understand that this is natural, normal, not a sin or misbehavior. It's just natural. Yeah, I, I think that's a really, really great point. Pastor James said that earlier, that churches are not all the same. I have eyes. I am able to see. If you look at in the, if you look in the Bible, David saw Bathsheba and he was attracted to her, but then he took it a step further and then acted out and then wanted to pursue her and had her husband killed. It's not a sin and it's nothing wrong that I see someone that I'm attracted to. It goes into the next step is when I act upon my attraction. When I meditate. And then, right, when I meditate I on stuff. it. Correct. I don't eliminate Correct. it. Correct. Because the God of the universe lives on the inside of me. Totally. So the Holy Spirit that is in me, the God of the universe, he acts as that one that comes in and says, now, Tiffany, yeah, you see him. You're attracted to him, but I'm living inside of you. I'm empowering you to be able to control yourself before this enters into something where you're going to destroy something that you've actually brought before me. You're about to destroy your covenant. It's nothing wrong with seeing things. And I think sometimes we are overcomplicating it. It does not become a sin and it does not become something that until I start meditating on it, I start lusting after it. I start really thinking about it. I start dreaming about it. At some point when I get to that point, I've already kind of made this emotional connection in my yeah. soul and I've already taken it too far. Yeah. You've got to be prepared and to guard your heart. Yeah. When I guard my heart, I see something and I know that it goes against what I believe. So I set up parameters and I no longer meditate on it. That gives me the ability to want to act out on it. And Kenya, the same way y'all been teaching couples for the last 20 years, we've been eliminating ungodly and unhealthy soul ties for a few years now. Right. So therefore, yeah, it's, um, yeah, we, we doing this in a biblical way. We saving people's, we helping, we saving people's lives, helping people get back control of their life, helping people get back control of their mind. Once they're eliminating ungodly soul ties by making covenants and doing, making vows and making promises in unhealthy and ungodly ways. Yeah, I think it just goes back to the root of it. At all times, you must guard your heart.
So clearly, these two people, they do not believe what marriage is according to the scriptures. They want to live this lifestyle and just do whatever else they want. Okay? To me, I'm actually, it's so even embarrassing to be quite honest okay she calls herself she's a prophetess she's a priestess right she said that she's a priestess but she's out there like on vacation with another man and they're actually posting this stuff on social media on instagram this is what they do they're not hiding to be you know they're not hiding anything this is what they've been doing so but that's how they've chosen to live their life but we know the word of god is clear okay he who created them created them male and female from the beginning. God has divorced. Marriage is between one man and one woman. Sex is supposed to sex is in the comforts of marriage. Anything that's happening outside, God does not condone, does not approve. That is sinful. That's it. Because that's what the scripture teaches. Straight and narrow. If you veil off and everything, there is grace, there is mercy, there's repentance available. Just cry out to Christ. But whatever else they're creating, it doesn't matter how much money they're going to have, how many kids they're going to raise, how many people are going to help. It is still against the word of God. Therefore, it is sinful. And even say like, oh, we can teach you how to do these things. Like, no, we already have the word of God. If God has spoken, okay, God is the designer of marriage. Marriage is a covenant between a man and a woman in the context of marriage. That's where people can partake the one flesh union. Anything that people say, we reject that according to the scriptures, right? Marriage is for procreation, for companionship. It serves as illustration of the gospel, the picture of the gospel. That's what marriage is for. It's for protection, okay? Wives. Children are best protected in marriage. They're best provided for in marriage. It's for provision. They're best provided in, um, in the context of a marriage, right? This is how you build the society, okay? You have strong families. You're going to have strong societies. That's how God has designed things. The first institution that God instituted was what? Was a family, okay? Before the government and before the church, it was a family, okay? The government is God's deacon, okay? The church is the bride of Christ. The family is what God has designed to fill, you know, to fill the earth, right? To subdue the earth, the, the creation mandate. So we are just going to stick to the scriptures because God has already spoken. Anything else, if it does not match in the scripture, we, are, we reject that wholesale. Wholesale, we reject that wholesale. God defines what marriage is and marriage is a covenant. Yes, okay? So, yes. And also, marriage also serves as scientification, right? That's where, like, okay, two sinners coming together, trust and believe scientification will be taking place there, right? For scientification purposes, for sure. However, not everybody is going to get married. But you are a product of a marriage, right? Because we just didn't come from somewhere. You have a mom, you have a dad. So you do come from a family. Everybody comes from a family, okay? You might not have a husband. You might not have a wife. In heaven, there'll be no marriages in heaven, okay? They never will be like angels. Jesus wasn't married either, okay? Jesus wasn't married. Jesus didn't have kids, okay? But he was part of a family, right? He had his mom and he had his dad. That's how all of us, right? We have our mom, you know, Lady Eve and Adam, right? So in Adam, first Adam and the second Adam in Christ. So yes, so, you know, there's people be like, no, no, no. Marriage is not be all the end all, right? But he who finds a wife finds a good thing. So God is the one who has designed these things. If you want to be single, if you've been gifted for the gift of singleness, God is going to sustain you in that for the work of the ministry, right? If you desire to get married, pray for God to bring you a godly woman, to bring you a godly husband. But your heart should be satisfied in Christ. No no husband is going to satisfy you. No wife is going to satisfy you. Only Christ can satisfy you fully. So whether you are married or you're not married, you are valuable in the eyes of God. We are human beings created in the image of God. Okay? So you don't want to have your children as your idol or your husband as your idol, right? You submit to all those things. Those are the gifts, right? But you appreciate those things as unto the Lord, right? So, yes, so those are the things that we... Um, Anything that God says that it is good, we are here to say yes and amen, it is good.
So things are going to happen in this world for one reason or the other. We live east of Eden, but we understand how God has made things to be. Okay. All right, guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you. All lies will be exposed. That's all. All lies will be exposed. That's all. All lies will be exposed. That's all. All lies will be exposed. That's all.